In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lost my mic. Is that a mic drop at the beginning? There's a great phrase that I love to hear. Really love it. This is how we've always done it. I myself find myself using it sometimes as well. Something that I heard a lot when I first started working at my first job out of seminary in a parish where there was a Sunday school director who I loved dearly. I was even in her son's wedding. And we had some strife because I was this young guy coming straight out of seminary. I had all these ideas. I had all this, these thoughts of what works because I had just learned everything, right? I mean, this is where we're coming from. We just get out of there. We know what works, right? That's what you're supposed to think. So that's the mindset that I went in. And it went horribly wrong because at some point there was this tension with, well, that's how we've always done it. You can't change that. That's how we've always done it. You can't change that. We heard that a lot last week as we hosted, as you all know, this beautiful archdiocese convention. But it was the first archdiocese convention that we've had in four years. There was a break because of COVID. We missed a year. And so like some memories might have been a little fuzzy about how we always done it. Plus, let's be real. We don't always do things the way that we've always done it at St. George and Phoenix. We like to try to change some stuff up to see what will work, to maybe change how things can be better and how things can change. But yet we heard regularly, but this is how we've always done it. And there was strife that might have ensued a few times throughout the course of the week. As a result of that mentality, this is how we've always done it. And I think today, as we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord, we have a clear insight into this idea of, but that's how we've always done it. Because let's be real, if that's how we've always done it, are we just sitting there? Are we actually happy with the way we've always done it? Are we happy about all of the things that have gone on? Or are we willing to start asking ourselves the question, how's that working? And if we're willing to say, how's that working, what are we willing to try? And in this story that we hear today about our Lord going up onto the mountain, we hear that change is not bad, right? Our Lord goes up onto the mountain and the disciples, he takes three of his disciples with him. And while he's there, they see him, and he changes completely. It says, his face shone like the sun. And with him, they saw Moses and Elijah standing on either side. And so Peter, with this mindset of that's how we've always done it, with this desire to memorialize everything, because that's ultimately what we're doing when we say this is how we've always done it, he says, Lord, it's good that we're here. Because it's so good that we're here, I am going to set up three booths, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. That way we have these things set up here where this great thing happened. And we can always come back on this same day and remember what had happened because it was so wonderful, because that's how we've always done it. But Christ doesn't really give them an opportunity. Really, God doesn't really give them an opportunity to go into other, any further. Because as Peter's talking, a bright cloud overshadowed them. They hear the voice from heaven. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And then they go down from the mountain, and they go out, and Christ tells them, don't be afraid, get up, let's go. It's interesting, this idea, because the word transfiguration comes from the Greek word metamorphosis. And that word metamorphosis, we know from biology to be about a butterfly. And as, as the caterpillar goes into its cocoon, goes through all this process and does what it needs to do, it comes out different, comes out changed. Ultimately, transfiguration means change. It means to push beyond the way we've always done it. But we get stuck. And we have some things that block us from being willing to go to that change, from being willing to ask ourselves that question, how is it working? From being willing to say, is there something different that we can do? 
We like to stick with what we know, and these things block us from everything. First and foremost, we are stuck in this mentality of how we've always done it. Second, we get dependent on our memory for how we've always done it. And I don't know about you, but as I get older, my memory's not as always as clear as I think it is. And finally, we're afraid of new, just like the disciples were afraid as they saw the Lord shining and hear this booming voice from heaven. They're afraid of what might come. So I've got three practical points for us today of how we might be able to enact something different, try something out. And the first is we have to get past it and recognize that there was a time that I was not there. Now, I know it's hard to believe. I have this struggle all the time when I talk to my parents because the fact that there was a time in their lives that was before February 12, 1982, which was the best day in their lives, when I came into their lives, the fact that they could have had anything else that went on up before that day is hard for me to believe. And in the same time, us thinking that this is how we've always done it falls into that same thing. There was a time when we were not there, but saying this is how we've always done it really means this is how it's always been as long as I've been involved. So we have to get through that. We have to break through that. We have to recognize that there was a time when I was not. The only one who there was not a time when there he was not is the Son of God. That's why we call him only begotten. If any of us are only begotten, then there's some other conversation that needs to be had. But the reality is there was a time when we were not. And getting past that helps us to start that process of getting through, this is how we've always done it. Second, once we've gotten through that, we have to be open to new ideas. We can't just close our minds off to think that how that we are used to things is the only way that things can go. We have to be open to new things. That doesn't always mean that everything that we're doing is wrong, and it doesn't always mean that everything we're about to do is wrong. But just because it's what we're used to, it does not mean that it is the best course. That just means that that's where we're comfortable. And finally, after we've done this, after we've gotten through these things and gotten past this idea of, okay, I'm comfortable and this is how we've always done it, so I'm just going to keep doing it that way because that's what makes me comfortable and happy. We need to make it happen, Captain. We have to get out there and we got to do it. We got to try new things. We've got to see different ways that we can do it and not be afraid of the new things. Ultimately, in our lives, we have to let God's word change us. And that is what is precisely happening in this story today, in this feast. Christ is transfigured. Christ is the word of God. He is showing us a new way in his word. And in his word, he's standing in the center, and he has Moses and Elijah, which represents the entirety of the word of God, having with him those two major figures of the Old Testament, the law and the prophets. How often do we hear Christ is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets? Now we have all three things there on a day that we are called to change. And we hear the voice from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. May our great God, who is the effulgent splendor of his father, give us the strength to be unafraid to enact that change in our lives and get beyond this is how we've always done. Amen.